Welcome to Mom and Dad Magic Box. I'm Isaac Carmignani. In this program, we bring together parents, teachers, and yes, even our children from time to time to share experiences and resources on how to improve our children's lives academically and socially. Here you will find free and affordable community programs, resources, exciting guests, parents, parent leaders, school administrators, city officials, and other stakeholders, and we come together to discuss important topics in education and parenting. Here we will explore what works, from apps to school and after-school programs. On this show, we will endeavor to keep you apprised of the things making headlines in our schools. So let's get started. In our headlines today, Stuyvesant High School has been a lightning rod in New York City politics for a long time. Now, some are calling to scrap Stuyvesant's admissions formula. As Slate.com reported recently, to gain admission, last year nearly 28,000 students took the entrance exam to get into Stuyvesant and the other specialized high schools. However, what separates Stuyvesant from the rest of the specialized high schools is that it has the highest cutoff. What that means is that it admits the highest scoring 950 or so students, not all of whom attend. This wouldn't be such a problem were it not for one awkward and uncomfortable fact. That is that Stuyvesant's admissions formula has not yet yielded a student body that looks anything close to New York City. Of the 952 admissions that were offered to Stuyvesant students in 2014, 71% went to students of Asian origin, while only 2.9% went to students of African American and Latino origin. The shortage of African American and Latino students is not new. They have been relatively rare, in fact, since the school was established in 1904. But as the city's demographics have changed, the absence of African American and Latino students has grown all the more obvious. Thus, some are calling to completely change the path that students take to enter the specialized high schools. Some have called for reserving seats from middle school valedictorians. Of course, this raises concerns, particularly in overcrowded boroughs that contribute a high number of students to the specialized high schools. Stay tuned. So, in today's program, we're going to be speaking with parents. So, today we have two exciting guests. They are involved fathers, involved in their children's education and in their children's schools. Their children attend district public schools in New York City, in the boroughs of Manhattan and Queens, and their names are Raul and Mongol. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. So, gentlemen, good to have you on the program today. So, tell me a little bit about your families. Maybe, Raul, you can start. Okay, uh, my family, I have uh, two children at the elementary school uh, in public schools in Manhattan. And you, Margo? Yes, um, I have one son. He is seven years old. Uh, currently, he's in a uh, gifted and talented program in the Astoria, Queens. Oh, very yes. nice, mm -hmm. very nice. Congratulations on all those gifted and talented programs you have to test for, and, uh, and it's, it can be challenging. Sure. Very mm -hmm. nice. So I mentioned at the start of this segment that you are involved fathers. So what does that mean for you? What, how are you involved in your children's education? Maybe Mongo, we can start. Um, the way I look at education is I basically I, I spend time with him. Whenever I have opportunities to spend time with him, let's say I play with him, I try to uh, structure the activities that I, I spend with him. And it turned out good that um, I spend time with him, he, he likes it, and he learns things that I, I try to teach him as well. Going, that's, that's really good. Uh, Raul, how about you? How, how are you involved in your, your children's education? Well, there are several ways I'm involved. Uh, first one is, of course, uh, reviewing that they are, do their assignments, they do their, okay. their homework. Uh, I get, uh, I have a folder special where I communicate with the teachers. 
whatever they want me to see, they put it in the folder. If I have, have any question, I put it back in the folder. So every day we communicate with uh, true papers in the folder. Yes, I, yeah, we're doing the same thing because they, you know, at home, basically, when he goes to school, he has he needs to have a, a folder, and the way his school does is one side is what he has to give to school, and the other side is what the school gives back to, to parents, and the parent has to take a look and either sign on a form or something like that, and we have to make sure he, he does his homework. Yeah, so you keep it organized. I know that's, that's yeah. challenging, especially mm -hmm. as they get older with middle school, that can be mm -hmm. tough. Yeah, and also uh, there are two activities. I, I meet with, uh, teacher, with each teacher twice per month. One is uh, per like month. A, twice per month. Wow. One is uh, the group session. We call it the Family Friday, where all the parents are invited to stay one hour at the school from uh, nine to ten every last Friday of the month. We are in the classroom, and they do what they are doing uh, at that moment. So if they are drawing or reading, or histories or writing. They chose what they are doing. Right. That's a group activity. That's that's nice. You know, at, at my son's school, they bas basically they give up opportunities for parents to get involved in the class. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, like on someone's birthday, they will give opportunities to parents. Do you want to come and bring a nice book and read to to kids, or you want to do like? handcraft activities and it's, it's so so in, in in my son's last birthday uh, we we went to school we prepared some handcrafted we, we we do basically you know two pieces of paper right and cardboard we, we draw a bird on one side and we draw a cage on the other side and we, we attach it uh, we have a pencil Right, and you put two pieces of paper, and then when you spin, you will see that a bird is in a cage. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, like like we used to have when we were mm -hmm. kids. Uh, we you, we you flip through the flip books and yes. you see a, yes. a motion picture. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. basically, yeah. We, we teach them about illusion, and and they, they get hands on. They can teach them a little science in there too, and yes. a little movie making a yes. little bit there, yes. right? And they have nice, fun. Nice. And yeah. Yes. So now now. It's been said that there's uh, the involved parent that's involved with their child's education, and then there's the engaged parent that goes a step further and gets involved with the school, with the PTA, with some of the school structures. Have you gentlemen been able to do that at all in, in your uh, whatever free time you, you can yeah, find? It's, it's very hard to find the time, but also um, you have to have the commitment to do something extra for your children. But at the beginning of the year, I sent, uh, we fill out a, a questionnaire right, right. of what are our skills or what, uh, in which activities we are willing to help. Right. And every time there is an activity that we sign off as potential uh, helpers, we get an email, okay, there is this activity for next month, uh, you sign off that you were interested, are you available for this date? And I mean, most of the times I, I try to to participate in that. Great, great. You were mentioning to me you do some photography too. I know yeah. schools uh, sometimes have carnivals and multicultural festivals, these kinds of things. That's yeah. nice. I didn't know you were a photographer. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, it's, it's, you know, you can take <laughs> my family picture sometimes. That would be great. Yes. Uh, well, how about you, Marco? You uh, get to go beyond? Yes. Um, you know, uh, as, as, as a parent, we, we basically we want to help, and the, the first thing we can help is, is to become a PTA member. And when they have meetings, we try once a month, we try to participate in that. And it happens that I also am on, I'm on SLT, which is a school leadership oh. team. Okay, now what's that? What's a school leadership team? Actually, school leadership, school leadership team uh, is a team of faculties. And, and parents, like seven uh, faculties and seven parents. We, we meet every month and we discuss about school policies 
and see like, things that we can we can uh, improve at the school. So let me ask you let me ask you two more questions. One is talk to me about your schools and what you feel are some of their strong points, some of the strong things they're doing. And a row you mentioned some of the festivals and things that you have an opportunity to take uh, f photographs at. So maybe that's one that your school's doing. That's, that's yeah. you know, what, what are some success stories coming out of your schools? I mean, I can say for first, the gifted and talented program, that's something that is, is amazing. I mean, I think the children uh, really have a lot of attention, a lot of opportunities to develop their capacity, their skills. That's something that is uh, very important for me. And also, I think that is one of the strengths is uh, all the activities uh, that was first also the commitment from, from the principal and the teachers. So, for example, my, my child went to Washington, D.C., and there were like, a, I don't know, f uh, three or four buses going to Washington, D.C. for a trip, a two-day trip, and it was fully covered by the PTA. Wow. That is, wow. That is amazing. That's uh, yes. something uh -huh. amazing. I like what you mentioned too about the meeting with your school's teachers because this is a feature of the new contract that the UFT and the Department of Education signed. But it looks like your school was doing it even before the contract. So you know the, the good ideas come from somewhere that, uh -huh. that eventually get codified. And so that's that's nice to hear that you were on the cutting edge. What about you, Michael? What are some of the success stories out of your school? I think um, I really like school emancipation and and. Um, the principal, um, she, she, she cares so much about kids, and she has concern about you know their safety and to make sure that everyone um, never get left behind. Everyone deserves a chance to to learn and progress. My, my not if not every kid will will study at the same pace, right. but. The one who, who are slower than others, they will get attention, and and I like that. And so it's individualized enough. Yes. To to get everyone. Yes, and also yeah. whatever concern that we have, we can talk to her openly, and and she listen and try to find a solution. Yeah, I, I think they call this differentiated instruction, so mm -hmm. that you you get all your students. Yes. Yeah. And also. At, at his school, I found the fundraising activities are very uh, creative. Hmm. Okay. How's that? Because they, they, uh, there are some activities like 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 uh, other schools that you know sell chocolate, sell uh, bake, sell uh, chop, buy from catalog. But not only that, this school also organize a like, family event, like movie night, and you know, you, yes, you can pay eight, ten dollars to go to movie theater, but you go and pay, spend that money and it goes to movie theater. Now, school screen a movie, uh, that, let's say, a cartoon from Walt, Walt Disney, and you know, we, not every parent gets to spend time together with kids, and this is a very good idea. Sure. One, then, uh, one evening, like fly day, uh, 7 p.m., like we all finish from work and, and go to school and enjoy the movie with kids. This is like And then the proceeds go into mm -hmm. the school. Yes, yes. So, and so it's mutually beneficial. Well. Yes. Bas basically, parents got to spend time with kids. PTA raise some money, and that money goes toward uh, extra curriculum programs that school cannot afford. You know, these days budget cuts mm -hmm. is, is a big mm -hmm. issue, and yeah. some school. And then when that happened, uh, you know, science, math will not be cut, uh, social science will not be cut. The first thing that we will go is either the music program, the yes. dance program, yes. things of this nature. Yes, yes, and you know, at, at my son's school, the money that raised from the PTA, Parent Teacher Association, we can we can fund uh, a program called Little Orchestra, and I I love about this program is you. Um, I've heard of Little Orchestra. Yes, yes. I, 
have been exposed to it. Yeah. So basically, this program, they try to expose young kids to, to music and take them to see a little kind of Broadway show for kids. And they, they, they bring musicians to school and perform different instruments, um, violin, trumpet, saxophone, and, and then let them compose their own song. So those are the success stories. Now, if you were to fantasize for a little bit, what would be, how would you improve? What, what, what things could be done to improve uh, engaging parents or, or improve anything in, in, our, in, our, in our school system? I mean, let your ideas run wild. What would you do? Yeah, well, well uh, um, based on my experience, is uh, the I see limited resources for the after-school program. Yeah. So I see a big uh, challenge or opportunity on making more balance the after-school yeah. program. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Parents go to work for eight to ten hours, sometimes more, and school is in session for approximately six. So there's this this disconnect mm -hmm. that we need to fill, this mm -hmm. two, three hour gap. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Mark? What, yes. what would you do? I mean, for this topic, I really, um, I think the key uh, to help schools and help parents is, is the fundraising. Um, but because everyone can have good ideas, and but good ideas without money, it will not nothing will happen. So what, 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 what I have done is, I, you know, I'm, I'm writing a blog about parenting. Oh, yes, parentingwithmongol.com, I think it is, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. okay. Yes, um, and I have written uh, five or six articles about, you know, parenting in, in, in my style. Basically, I, I expose my son to different activities, and the key is to make it fun for him, and but but that not, that's not the point. <laughs> um, I'm working on because many PTAs file that is is an issue that when they then when they want to do fundraising, but they cannot get parents to, to involve. And why is that? Because they don't have parents uh, contacts. So I I try I would like to to give them resources put on the website, step one, two, three, four, five. Well, what do you need to do in order to get parents' con contacts? And after they have parent contacts, they have to need to have a database to, to manage and organize that contacts. You know, you have new parents, and you have parents who already finished school and, and move on. So you need a way to, to manage this uh, effectively. And now you have contacts of parents in a database, how, how to make it useful, you have to somehow use this contacts and send communication to them. Then also have another step to, to guidelines how they can link a database to a mailing list program that they can uh, send email to parents. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the next step is they have to to know what parents uh, want. Because some parents have, have kids in middle school, some parents have kids in elementary school. And how do, you, how do we know that uh, if, if we have a movie night, are they gonna come? Uh, the movie night works for kids in, in lower grades, like elementary. And for bigger kids, you can, you can organize like a dance party and get together to know each other. Um, balloon dancing event, uh, like a band. So, so, so you're things. thinking on the, the organizing of parents. So, so basically, I provide a tool for parents to, I have a, a survey that I created and it's available online. Mm -hmm. And they will just click and download the tools and I, I pro provide free online form that they can use and mm -hmm. they can print it out and then give it to parents and uh, get contacts and 
and also perform survey to to know what what kind, if they if they organize an event who's going to come like right. that so they can they can perform a survey and then now that they have contacts of parents they know what they want and the PTA will organize the event that most parents will come and that will happen so th these are the kinds of things that could be done in a more 21st century way with a smartphone mm -hmm. with your uh, your tablet you don't have to be uh, physically always present at the school mm -hmm. to figure these things out yeah. I mean yeah. right now I don't have uh, that much of the plan but we, we start from provide simple tools for, for PTA to use and and let's see if, if there is a need for that. I, I will. I will well, put that, that. That's interesting. So there you have it, folks. Uh, two involved fathers and parenting with Mongo, the blog. You might want to check that out. And uh, Raul is doing uh, what many more of us parents need to be doing. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here with us. Appreciate it. Raul, thank you. Our pleasure. So we hope you enjoyed our program today. We look forward to seeing you on our next episode where we discuss more pertinent information related to our schools and our children's education. Be well. New York Junior Tennis Learning Free Summer Tennis Programs will begin the week of July 7th. The tentative list of this summer's locations, along with days and hours of operation, is available by clicking the link on your screen. For any NYJTL community tennis program, registration is and continues to be open. That means you can register at any time throughout the season at the site you choose to attend during the hours of operation. There are no waiting lists or deadlines to register. They provide free use of tennis rackets during play at the site as well as qualified instructors and lessons. Times of lessons and free play time are determined by each site director and is based on age and skill level at each site. Site directors will inform you upon registration which days and times will be assigned to your children. For questions and additional information, contact Scott Daly at the email address displayed. Now for today's featured app. Many schools have dual language programs, but for those who do not or those simply interested in learning a second language or having their child learn a second language, here is a free app. It is called Duolingo and can be downloaded from the Play Store, the App Store, or directly on your PC at duolingo.com. That's D-U-O-L-I-N-G-O dot com. There are many languages available. It is self-paced and you can assess your progress as you go. Mm -hmm.